Hi, and welcome back to uh, quite a long-awaited episode of the Knit Licorice podcast. This is the second actual episode of the podcast that I am putting out here on YouTube. And uh, today we have uh, quite a packed episode. Um, I imagine it could be quite long. So I just went on a walk after recording that video and I realized that I actually didn't introduce myself. Um, my name is Michaela and I run this uh, Knit Licorice podcast. I'm a knitting enthusiast from Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, yeah, I suppose that's everything. Um, yeah, on with the episode. <laughs> but anyway, um, the reason I've taken such a long time, or it's taken such a long time for me to sit down and uh, record a new episode is actually that we, we um, me and my sister went to London and then I came back, had a really busy week at work, and then I got super sick. Um, and then I had another busy week and so on and so forth with busy weekends. And yeah, here we are a bit later than I had planned uh, to, to be filming a new episode. But yeah, it's the end of March. It's Easter in two days here in Sweden. We celebrate on uh, like Easter Eve, not Easter Day. And uh, yeah, that's traditional here. We also celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve and so forth. And uh, yeah, it, it feels good to be back. Um, I have quite strong uh, spring vibes. The flowers are finally starting to bloom here, popping up a bit in the ground. And yeah, and that was uh, super nice in London as well because the flowers had already started blooming there. So there were lots of daffodils, I think they're called, like a yellow uh, Easter flower here in Sweden. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a great time basically. We walked around so, so much and saw so many things. But I think one of the highlights of the trip was actually, we went to a, a musical called Hamilton. And uh, it's my understanding that it, it's from, yeah, it's from the US basically, but it's been put up in London as well. And uh, I thought it was great. The venue was really cool. It was quite, it was, it was not small, but it was more intimate than perhaps a, a larger stage, but it was fantastic and, and the, the cast was super talented. And if I do say so myself, I, I, I found that the, the ladies singing were super fantastic. And it was an amazing performance, truly. So that was a highlight. I didn't get to many yarn stores. I actually only went to one. But more on that in just a little bit, because I thought I would start with what I actually finished and what I was working on for the trip, before the trip. I had two weeks uh, as my window to work on this before we left. And so it was quite a busy couple of weeks before we flew to London. And that is actually this, this uh, sleepover. It is the Montpellier Slipover by November Knits. And I knit this, I started it, and I finished it in two weeks. And yeah, what can I tell you about this before I stand up and try to show you a bit better? So this is a top-down kind of slipover, and it's worked both flat, but then you connect and it in the round after that. It has these ribbing details along the sleeves, Maybe you can tell, but it gives a really nice edge to it. So it, it's really no, no other edge than just, yeah, I think it's a stocking it. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. And uh, then you pick up and knit the double folded collar. So it's a long, long tube. Um, and yeah, oh, and now I have yarn in my, <laughs> in my mouth. Um, but yeah, it's, Finished with a tubular bind off, and I try to show you that when I get up. Uh, it's a one by one, like rib stitch, and yeah, I think we can start there anyway. But here it is. <laughs> I guess I'll bend down a bit for you to see. But yeah, here is the edge, and as you can see, I think I tried to. Uh, 
to work with several different, like, what do you call them? Not skeins, but you know what I mean, for Spagnol. Yeah. And I think you can see it's a bit like color blocks, but that doesn't bother me bother me at all. Um, it has uh, quite a a nice. It's both drapey, but at the same time, quite structured. And it was, I had planned to style it like this, basically, when I made this. So it's just, you know, a pair of, uh, like, suit pants and, yeah, like a shirt underneath. But yeah, it's a um, 16 stitch pattern, like 16 stitches for 10 centimeters or 4 inches. It comes in eight sizes with a finished circumference of 110 to 167 centimeters with an intended ease of 25 to 30 centimeters. That's a lot of data, but <laughs> there you go. Um, it's made for worsted weight yarn and it's worked up on five millimeter needles or whatever you need to achieve the gauge. But yeah, I knit mine in two strands of Nutian yarn uh, in the colorway Önska, which means to wish. And I really actually liked it for this pattern. I thought it worked really well. Especially when you start, you like knit in pieces. I'm not gonna say too much, but I think it's a pretty common way to just you knit for this shoulder, for this shoulder you connect here and knit down. Then you knit the back piece in one, basically. But there's a lot of yarn that you kind of uh, you pull. What would you? I'm sorry. I, I'm losing my mind a bit. Apparently, um, Jesus. Basically, you cut the yarn a lot of times because you have a lot of different pieces. But that's really easy when you're working with unspun yarn. That was what I was trying to say. Um, and for this, I actually developed my own method for an Italian bind-off. Um, so it's basically a, a kind of sewn bind-off that mimics, you get this like rolled hem that looks like the ribbing is flowing over the edge. And I've had a lot of people had issues doing that. Um, but I've, the way I did it, I found it really easy. So it's just knit in two strands of unspun, knitted in yarn. But the way I did it was I got these two strands and I made them three times as long as whatever the cir circumference was that I I was doing the bind off on. And then I had a glass of water like this. And then I basically held the two strands of yarn, dipped my fingers in the water then. <laughs> and I did that for the entire length of yarn, basically. And then I got a super strong strand of unspun yarn in the same shade as this and I think it worked fantastically well actually it was it felt almost as though for every stitch that I passed through every time I uh, I, I uh, sewed through a stitch it was as if the strand of yarn basically got stronger and stronger every time and I think if you've done an Italian bind off before, you, or at least I have found that the more times you pass through, the like almost weaker and more fussy the yarn becomes. Um, but not in this case. It actually felt as though it got sturdier and sturdier for every time. And I guess it's just the friction that keeps on like felting this strand of like two on spun yarns, yarn strands. For the uh, like rub together, but yeah, it worked wonders for me, and and that way it was a like a bit of prep work to do the bind off, but it was really no issue at all to to do the actual bind off, and that was what I was worried about. And yeah, I think you, you, I think it looks good at least. So if you're worried about that or have wondered about it yourself, I would like recommend that you try it at least on a do like just a small little sample and try it and see if if it works for you and yeah the only thing was that I had envisioned like wearing this at the office but I did one day 
and I was actually too warm in this, at least this time of the year. And so yeah, that, that was a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, it's a love, loved piece. I, I think I will just cherish and use this a lot. Um, it's, it feels like a wardrobe staple to me. I'm really happy to have it. But let's move on to my work in progress. I have only one. If you uh, don't think too hard about the next project I'm gonna <laughs> show you, but one active work in progress basically is what I'm trying to say. And that is this right here. <laughs> I love how how, uh, how fussy it is. This is an Apollonis sweater by Sari Nordlund and it is a top-down worked in the round like basic round yoked sweater um, and I am knitting it from her book softly um, timeless knits and I have been really enjoying it I oh sorry I'm not gonna let's let's try that again I almost show you showed you that no it's just the information let's try again um, yeah it's just kind of a basic staple piece I think but I felt like I needed a break and I wanted something with a larger gauge um, and something that was quite simple. And this also has options for short rows at the back of the collar and as well as at the uh, body sleeve separation of the sweater. It's a 14 stitch gauge worked up on six millimeter needles with bulky weight yarn. I am working mine up in some yarn that I had in my pantry already. And it's this Sunless Gone brushed alpaca, but it's in this tweedy colorway, which, or it is a tweed, it's a tweed, <laughs> brushed, brushed alpaca tweed. Um, but it reminds me of gravel in snow, I think. And that's really common here in Sweden as it gets a bit warmer or it snows and then it melts away a bit and then you have these like pieces of gravel in in snow and that's what this reminds me of with the fuss factor as well um, and yeah it's recommended to be worked up at a gauge of 12 to 18 stitches so it can be yeah it, it has a huge variation basically of what you can do with it and uh, knitting needles recommended of four to seven millimeters um, so it's basically whatever you want to do with it, you can do or, or within those stitch counts. But the composition is 83% brushed alpaca, it's 13% Donegal, which I guess are the tweed bits, and then 4% uh, nylon, which might be part of the core of this yarn, which is, by the way, really inelastic. It's like working with a, f a fussy plant-based yarn basically. It has zero give and I can tell that when I'm knitting it up as well that it can be a bit strenuous on the hands but I love the fabric that it makes and I'm hoping you can tell. And then it has a a bit at the top here which is just a piece of a few rows of stockinette that naturally rolls in on itself and it's a detail that I quite find uh, quite charming but yeah I opted to do the neck shaping short rows or that like heightens the back of the shirt a bit because otherwise I usually feel a bit uh, strangled <laughs> to be perfectly honest and I think the fit is Generally, generally better with your purse. But yeah, I'm working away on this and I needed something easy and a bit mindless after the project that I'm about to share. 
but I'm super excited about this and it's still quite cold in Sweden. We've had, yeah, I, I think I, I've maybe mentioned before, but we had quite a long and dark winter and it's spilling over into spring. So it's basically, it snowed like yesterday or the day before yesterday, almost all day, but it's not cold enough for the snow to, to like lay on the ground, but it is cold enough for it to snow. And we have some nights still that are in the negative uh, Celsius degree. So basically where water freezes, um, for those, who, those of you who's, who uh, speak in Fahrenheit, where water freezes is zero degrees. <laughs> and yeah, I'm super happy with that. Oh, I'm so, sorry, I didn't tell you the colorway. It's 2523 and it's a Tweedy snowy kimchi. I like it. On to the, <laughs> the project that, that led me to start on that one to begin with. And yeah, as I mentioned, we went to London. <laughs> if you missed it, we went to London. And uh, we went to only one yarn store and it was the Oxford yarn store. And I know that I mentioned in a previous episode that I was planning on making a colorful project to be finished for Easter. Now, I bought yarn for a project like that. I was originally, originally planning to make a Donna Jenna by Joanna Ang in Nutiden, the colorway Borg, which is um, like a warm green moss kind of a color, which I really love. Oh, I actually <laughs> have a piece of it. I, I brought like a, a sample stick of my unspun yarns and the extra piece of Sunday by, by uh, Sun is Gone in case I found something that I wanted to hold with it with me to London and this colorway is Hoag and I really liked having this although I didn't use it but now I have it <laughs> how practical for me and now I can show you so yeah that was what I was planning to do but then I went to Oxford Yarn Store and I found yarn for a Stripe Hype pullover by Kutowa Kika or Veronica Lindberg uh, here on YouTube and, and Ravelry and she's on Instagram as well. And so I started that up. It's a um, DK weight sweater. Uh, in 20 stitches for 10 centimeters with four millimeter needles. It has nine sizes ranging from 90 to 178 centimeters finished circumference and an intended positive ease of 20 to 30 centimeters. And the yarn I picked up for that, I didn't quite know how I, how I wanted to combine the colors, <laughs> but the colors that I did pick up were these. <laughs> and uh, my plan was basically the most colorful combination that I could think of I would get and this is what I came up with this is Color Lab by West Yorkshire Spinners and I also want a British yarn I wasn't gonna buy anything that was Scandinavian so um, for instance Sun is Gone or Knitting for Olive I, I decided I knew that I didn't want to buy that in the UK because I, I wanted to have some of you know, some yarn that that was made in the UK um, from my trip, but it's a hundred percent British wool and it comes in a range of diff different colors. This is the base color that I used for the sweater, and it's called Natural Cream. This bright and lovely yellow is called Citrus Yellow. I don't know what citrus is this shade. To me this is more of like a sunshine shade, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And this is pear green. This is crimson red. And then this is aqua green. And I don't think this is necessarily a aqua green. To me this is more of a cyan blue, which is, yeah, it's a blue with, with a, like a green undertone. Light, light blue with a green undertone, but I don't find this to be like 
aqua green necessarily. To me this leans more blue and I think maybe you'll agree once you see it knit, it knit up. This is how far I got on my stripe hike pullover that is now entangled in itself. Here we have it. It's, it's a colorful sweater. You, I don't think anyone can deny it. <laughs> but yeah, or maybe it does look a bit aqua green. Let me know what you think. Is this an aqua green or more of a cyan color? Uh, we can uh, discuss it in the comments. But basically, it's just a lovely striped sweater. And honestly, it's, it's not far from being done. But I have some issues with it because I'd... It all started when... No, sorry. <laughs> it's not that dramatic. But I had heard from some other podcasters, I think, that before deciding how long I wanted the sleeves to be, that it might be a smart idea to pick up and knit the collar because then it like singes in a bit and then the arm raises up a bit so it becomes a bit shorter naturally. So once I got this far I picked up and knit the collar and it's too small. Uh, it's <laughs> just a one by one rib finished with a Italian bind off but yeah it's a bit too small. Um, unfortunately, maybe it would block out, but at, as it is now, I just felt that. I'd been working on it quite attentively for a couple of weeks as I was sick. And I had, yeah, in just a couple of days, I think I knit. Actually, it's on Instagram. You can check it out for yourself, my progress that I made. Um, but the way you knit this sweater is very similar how, to how you knit this one, with the difference being that you pick up stitches and knit sleeves as well. But it singes in quite significantly also at the bottom and I think you might be able to tell. Mm, maybe not super well, but so basically this is a bit too small and I tried it on um, the day before yesterday, I think, or maybe it was yesterday, it doesn't matter. I am not loving the yellow. I am not loving the yellow <laughs> and so I am thinking about maybe actually rip but maybe like cutting it and then like continuing with another color and I was thinking of perhaps repeating the green that's up here down here and I thought I actually thought I wouldn't like the red but I I really do like the red and I had some concerns going into this because if it's too much blue and yellow, it to me looks like the Swedish flag. And if it's red, yellow, green, it reminds me of a stoplight. So, so I had to, uh, to work around those thoughts that I had to try and decide the, the order that I would put the colors in, basically. Anyway, I do really like it, except for this and this. And as I had been working on this like intensely for a few weeks, I just felt that I needed a break from it. So I put it in the closet. <laughs> I'll revisit it, revisit it uh, once I find the strength and will to do so. But yeah, otherwise the pattern is really clear. The, pa uh, the instructions are very clear. So it's, it's not the pattern that's the problem. I am the problem. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically on pause now. And yeah, let, let's discuss the yarn for a bit. So I mentioned what this was. Um, it's the Color Lab by Yorkshire Spinners. And it is 100% wool. And for whatever reason, I don't... Yeah, this smells a bit more. It smells a... I don't know how to tell you, it's like a black pepper combined with sheep. And at times when I was working with it, I think it's aired out a bit at this point, because I've had it lying around for a month. But at some points when I was knitting on it, I actually got a, a headache from the way that this smelled. 
And I know that, for instance, if you knit with Nuted, and that smells quite sheepy as well, but not, not in the way that this smells. If anyone has a similar um, experience, let me know. But that shouldn't, either way, that shouldn't deter you from using this yarn. But this is, I think it's a, maybe a three ply or something, four ply. And it's quite, or I found this to be, uh, sorry, it's a piece of hair, quite an elastic yarn. Can you tell? No, maybe not. Let's see if I can block myself out. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can tell. So this stretches quite a bit, and I don't know if that had something to do with me knitting the collar way too tight, because in the original, and I think you can tell by the photos of the pattern, that it's a half-twisted rib, so all the right... No, all the stitches are knit through the back loop, and all the pearl stitches are just regular pearl stitches. Mm, and I did just one by one rib instead, with the same size needle, and I still ended up with a collar that was way too small. So I don't know if it, if it maybe had something to do with the yarn being quite stretchy, but yeah, other way. Yeah, either way, it doesn't matter. I think it's been fun to work with this. The only issues I had, except for the smell, the issue, the other issue that I had, and it was only for the the like natural cream shade is that parts of it were really like they had it had un, uneven bits of, yeah, basically really uneven parts of the yarn that was like clinging in, in ch like chunks on it that you could pull off and some sections were really, really thin. And I could definitely tell working on this. And I, at one point I was, yeah, for the week that I was sick, I was sitting in this couch. And as I got to bits, like that, where wool was clinging to, to the, the strand, I basically just tugged it off because I could do that. They were really chunky. It was almost like, you know, chunks that you would find on a, on a yarn like this. Yeah, like this. That was what it looked like. And I would get to a part like that and then I would pull that off and just toss it behind my back so it would end up on the floor here. And I think I got a picture of it. And then I, I would insert it here. But it was basically the, f the floor behind the couch was covered in this <laughs> like wool fuss that I had just pulled off the yarn. But as I said, it was only for the white yarn that I experienced that. And perhaps it was just this, this, um, what would you call it? This instance, oh, sorry, I'm, batch is it's perhaps the word I'm, I'm looking for. Of this particular batch, which I don't know, I have maybe 2175. Either way, <laughs> let's move on to some other bits and bobs from the Oxford Yarn Store. And I'm gonna do a quick pause because my camera will be shutting down in just a minute. And I think it's better if I'm timing that with a short break. <laughs> And we're back. As I mentioned, the only yarn store that we visited was the Oxford Yarn Store. And it was a small, quite nice store. Um, yeah, I did get a few more skeins of yarn other than the Color Lab. And yeah, let's get into it. As I maybe mentioned, basically I was on a color high almost <laughs> as I went there. Remember this was the end of February. Sweden is like 100 shades of gray and brown at that time of year and I was missing colors. Um, no flowers had started to bloom, nothing was even remotely green anywhere. So well to be fair it's not like it's really any different now. <laughs> Still pretty grey and brown and bleak. But hey, soon spring will be coming. You can tell. I feel it in the air. It's a bit warm. And the days are getting lighter and lighter. 
and so I missed color. And that's what I had in mind when I visited the yarn store. And so I have two skeins of this retreat, chunky roving, I think. Yeah, from West Yorkshire Spinners as well, just as the color lab. And it's 100% blue faced carry hill made in Yorkshire. Um, and it's in the colorway pon pon Ponder. Yeah, Ponder. It can be worked up in 14 stitches uh, at, yeah, per 10 centimeters. Each skein is 100 grams and it has a 140 meters or 153 yards in it. And it can be worked up on stitches six and a half millimeters, it says. And yeah, I got this. And then I also got this in the colorway Mellow, it's called. And especially this one is a bit darker than I think the camera is showing at the moment. It's more of a mustardy kind of yellow, darker yellow. And for the, these, I was planning on combining them somehow into a color work project. If everything goes well, <laughs> this could also be a nice thumbnail. <laughs> uh, yeah, and maybe I would make like a, a cowl or something. And I think these would contrast each other in a fun way. Looking forward to working that up at some point in the future. I don't know when, but at some point. And then I also got two skeins of West Yorkshire spins as well, called the Croft which is 100% 100, 100 Shetland Islands wool, also made in Yorkshire. And in these really fun colorways, which I think complement each other really well too, and I think they would uh, work well with my colors as well. Sometimes when reds are too warm, I don't find them very flattering is maybe not the right word, but I think this complements perhaps me just a bit nicer. And this is a DK weight yarn. Every skein comes in 100 grams at 225 meters or 246 yards. Oh, sorry, this is not a skein, this is a hack and uh, can be worked up at 22 stitches per 10 centimeters. So yeah, classic DK, I would say. And I thought that these could also be combined in some way for a project, but I haven't decided on anything yet. But basically now I have it, if I want to use it. And yeah, that was everything I had for acquisitions, but if you, Count the color lab as well. It was, I walked away from that store with um, a lot of yarn. And he actually, the, the manager, the person that was there at the time that we were, actually gave me a bag from the yarn store. Oh, hold on, I'll see if I can find it. And I think it was <laughs> simply because I was buying so much yarn that he thought, no way, is she gonna fit all of that in her bag? <laughs> so I think he threw this tote bag in for me. And yeah, just a cute little tote bag. Some funky colors. So yeah, that was really nice of him, I think. But yeah, that was it for the yarn haul or yarn related things that we got or that I got in England. And with that, I think we've been through finished objects. We talked about the works in progress, <laughs> projects that, that are on pause at the moment, some acquisitions. And I think that was it for this episode. Uh, to, uh, look ahead or reflect on the months or weeks that are coming 
after Easter. I'm really planning planning on casting on more spring summer knits uh, since, or I mentioned in a previous video that I think that we are going to a wedding in Venice in Italy and it's in the like the first week of June and we just booked, booked our flights and yeah I would like to get started on maybe a piece or two that I could wear for then and then I work on this like woolly fussy <laughs> project as well but I am actually looking forward to having like a, a couple of projects to work on because since maybe November last year I have been knitting on just one project at a time which is it can be nice but it can also be quite maybe if you encounter something that you you, you don't want to deal with or maybe you just need a break and work with different quality yarn or at a different gauge maybe uh, having more than one project at a time could be nice for variation and since I am knitting on every piece for at least a month at this point um, I would really love to have some variety basically is what I'm saying so I'll be casting on some things in the not too distant future is the plan anyway and now that Easter's here, maybe I'll have some time to do that and hopefully I'll have an update for you in the next episode. But yeah, oh and I'm gonna mention also if I notice that I have enough video material I, I am planning to put out like a shorter episode that's focused on the two weeks that I was making this slipover. So if that sounds great to you um, those plans looking ahead, please, you're more than welcome to subscribe, uh, like this video if you liked it. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to see you for the next episode. Whether it's a regular Knit Licorice episode podcast or if it's a bonus episode. I am so happy that you are here and I'm so happy that you stayed with me for the duration of this chatty episode. And yeah, I'm looking forward to spring and Easter and I hope you have a lovely, lovely time wherever you are in the world. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye!